Hi everyone, as you probably know the European Individual Championship is taking place at a very unusual place this year, Gyakovo, in, uh, at the Republic of Kosovo. Uh, this is a country which is not yet recognized by some neighboring countries for example and uh, it's not recognized all over the world. But nevertheless it's an interesting place to host a prestigious event like this one. Four rounds have been played so far and there are plenty of interesting games, as you can imagine, but I want to show you the shortest one that took place so far. And as you can easily expect, it was played in round number one, when the ratings of the opponents um, have usually a big difference, and when less experienced opponents are meeting some strong grandmasters. This game in particular was played between Kiru Gyorgiev and uh, Daud Tahiri. It started very slowly, with d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, and bishop f4, and actually nobody really um, awaited that this game will be a short one, because whenever you play the London system, usually you're expecting people uh, to fight for a very long time, some long grinding, and this is the reason probably why some very strong positional players nowadays have taken this system um, as their regular weapon. Name, for example, Mr. Vladimir Kramnik. Even Sergei Karakin plays it very often, but uh, probably the most famous name to use this on a regular basis is Gatakamsky of USA, uh, with excellent results, by the way. Okay, some other grandmasters also do it. And also Kiru Girgiev, he tried it in this game, but he chose a relatively rare move order with 92. Um, and after bishop b7, here he chose a really rare move, uh, the move knight to c4, quite an unusual one. As most of the people here go for either c3 or for either bishop d3, which transposes to the main lines of um, the London system after after that. c3, maybe h3, etc. and everything will end up in the usual stuff. But Kirill played the move knight c4. And at a glance, this looks, well, just like white is not really attacking something hugely. But if we have a closer look, we will see that the move 96 is a very serious threat at the moment. It's not only that white is taking an important bishop. Let's say that black does some move, some semi-waiting move. First of all, he's taking the important bishop. Yes, this is definitely a good thing for white. But more importantly, he is going to deprive the opponent of the right castle. He would be also attacking c5 and he would be also separating his position into two halves. And definitely this is not something that black can afford and that he would like to allow. And therefore uh, what white did in this position was the most obvious and I would say the most straightforward move d5. But that move appears to be almost a decisive mistake, a very, very big mistake, and this is playing perfectly in white's hands. Because black is chasing the knight at exactly the square where it likes to be. There is another square besides the one on d6 where the knight wants to be. Now, probably a move like bishop e7 is quite playable here, because if we have a second look at the move knight e6, we will see that it is not as deadly as we uh, once thought, because there is the move knight e4. And this is in particular what Prochaska tried against Kosic, and that game ended quite quickly, a draw after 14 moves since uh, Black developed his pieces nicely, he brought his knight on e4, and then he finished the development, he offered the draw, and White accepted it, even though there is plenty of, ga uh, plenty of play going on here. So that was one option. Another option for Black was to try and instead of bishop e7 to jump with knight e4 and to defend the square. This was pretty playable, I believe. And there is a third option which is not that good actually, d6. Um, just to see that uh, white's idea is not uh, as innocuous as it seems, because here white can capture on c5, and if black recaptures with the b pawn, d6 pawn is hanging, obviously, while if he recaptures with the d pawn, there will be the trait of the queens, and first of all, white can easily go long castle, then jump with the knight on d6, but he can also jump on e5 and g5 with his knights, and this pawn would be in trouble. 
well, speaking about this pawn on f7, let's see what happened in the game. After d5, the knight jumped on e5. And now white has a very concrete threat, bishop b5 check. And this is the reason why black hurried to stop this check, by playing the move a6. To be honest with you, I tried to take this position a bit. And I tried to uh, stop that threat and the other threat of knight g5, which happened in the game. But I think it's already quite difficult for black to defend. Say, for example, if he goes knight bd7, there would be bishop b5, very nasty pen, and uh, if a6, just knight g5. Anyway, f7 is defenseless, uh, this knight is pinned, so it cannot trade on e5, and after the capture on b5, knight takes f7, white is gaining the exchange and a pawn, and he also wants to escape with, with his knight, while well, if they try somehow to get rid of the, the one on g5, the one on h8 escapes first with the tempo, and only after that this one moves. That's not a good line for black, obviously. Uh, and another move to try to trade this annoying knight on e5 is knight f to d7. The idea being that on bishop b5, now they can try to chase away the knight immediately with the move f6. Okay, here a6 would be similar to what we have seen. Uh, say e6, there'll be knight g5. Well, f6 here uh, has a different problem, and this problem is that the king side is now all of a sudden weak. The knight was needed on f6 to defend this part of the board, and when the move knight h4, white can start a very, very strong attack. Say f takes e5, queen h5 check. If g6, white can just take it, not with the queen, but with the knight. While well, if king e7, the easiest and the best is to capture with the pawn, threatening bishop g5. Although the immediate bishop g5 check is not bad neither, and then followed by d takes e5, the knight is pinned, white is regaining the material, and this king remains in the center under tremendous attack. Also, knight g6 will be a threat after that to win the exchange, and I would say that white's advantage is quite serious. On the other hand, if they try, instead of capturing on e5 to defend with a move like g6, then white can continue playing in gambit style. He can afford doing that because he has full pieces out. And a fifth one is coming easily after that, the queen on g4. And if uh, black is trying to escape with a move like queen e7, there'll be a check, followed by a check on f7, the rook on h8 is lost. The attack continues with material advantage for white. Or if they try to capture on e5, there would be this check, followed by this check, and the queen is lost on e8. Once again, black is losing plenty of stuff. And finally, even a move like g5, and the situation would save him neither, as there is knight e7, followed by queen e6 check. Well, white is regaining the piece first of all, then he steps back with the bishop. There is no time for black to capture on g7 because of this fork, queen takes f6 check and queen takes h8 uh, with indeed huge material advantage for white and at the moment he's also two pawns up so this means that he should be easily winning. All of these lines they prove that black's mistake of playing d5 earlier on uh, move number 6 was already a very serious one. But what's wrong with the move, uh, with the move a6 which was played in the game? Well, here the problem is that after 9g5, very simple move again, the pieces, and in particular the knight that was brought on e5, is having very strong pressure on the pawn on f7. And this is the most vulnerable point in white setup, in black setup, excuse me, at the beginning of the game. And white can prove that very easily here. The pawn is defenseless, and white is winning a pawn. He also destroys uh, the casting right of the opponent. Next, he keeps on developing pieces. You might actually be surprised a bit that this is a novelty, and before that there was a game with 96 check, which uh, quite surprisingly black won. Even though in this situation he is completely losing, he is two pawns down, uh, but miracles happen in chess. And okay, on the long run somehow white messed up and lost this one, even though here he was easily winning with knight h7, knight h7 and queen h5 check with three extra pawns, it shouldn't be a big issue for him to convert his advantage.
but Kiru Gergiev is not allowing stuff like that. Surprise is like that. He just played bishop to d3 and on c4 simply took on h7 and queen h5. And that was it. That was the end of the game. On move number 12, I guess this is a new record. Black resigned because if he, for example, goes knight f6, there will be a discovered check, check queen, and if the king goes, say, on d8, there will be queen to f7 with the deadly threat knight xc6. Besides this one and besides this one, too many threats and nothing to do. Stay tuned for some more games from the European Chess Tournament, the European Individual Championship, and you can definitely follow the event in Gyakovo. You won't be disappointed. See you next time.